You're listening to The Head Trash Show with the founder of Head Trash, Alexia Leachman. Head Trash is the home to the new and unique Head Trash clearance method that removes unwanted negative thoughts, feelings and emotions quickly and effectively so that you can achieve clarity, confidence and contentment in your life. Tune in every week as Alexia shares insights and simple strategies to help you create some headspace to experience confidence and clarity in your life and business. To find out how to clear your head trash quickly and effectively using our unique method, pop over to www.headtrash.co.uk to get our free download and subscribe for our free head trash clearance updates. And now for the show. Hello and welcome back to The Head Trash Show. This is me, your host, Alexi Leachman. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now, today's show, I'm going to talk all about having a childbirth without fear. Yep, that's right. And the great thing about a childbirth without fear is that it means it's more likely to bring a childbirth without pain. So doesn't that sound interesting, especially for the guys, I'm sure. Um, But this is seriously, there's some really interesting, fascinating stuff I'm going to share with you on this show. So even if you are a guy and you're not pregnant, well, not that you would be if you're a guy, but if you know somebody who's pregnant, then you might want to point them in the direction of today's show because it really does contain some life-changing stuff. Certainly it was life-changing for me when I first discovered this stuff. So, but before I dive into today's show, I just want to share a little bit about what I've been up to behind the scenes and it's related to today's show, hence sort of mentioning it today. And as you know, I've been writing a book. And when I decided I was going to write a book during my pregnancy, I decided I was going to write a general head trash book because I needed to get a book out. And then when it came to actually starting writing it, I realised that there was a different book that needed to be written. And it was one about enabling or having a fear-free childbirth. And the reason for that is that once I'd had my sort of fear-free, pain-free birth, I was bombarded with emails from friends and friends of friends who wanted to know how I did it. And I was writing these really long emails to people, explaining to them what I was doing and all the information I'd come across and all this kind of stuff. And I thought, hang on a minute, this is the book, not the other book. So I quickly ditched the original book I was writing and started writing a book called Fear Free Childbirth, How to Have a Stress-Free Pregnancy and a Positive Pain-Free Birth. And the great news is the book is very, very nearly finished. Like I'm so close, it's ridiculous how close I am to finishing it. I'm really, really pleased. And I've launched a new website to help communicate the book. And if you want to find out more about it, then you can go and check out fearfreechildbirth.com. And if you want a free chapter, there's a free chapter waiting for you on the website if you want to check out what the book is like. And also there's an overview as to what chapters I've got in the book and all that kind of stuff. And there's also a special pre-launch offer if you want to go along and have a look at that. So yes, that's the book I've been writing. So I'm sorry to disappoint those of you that are expecting a, a sort of a general head trash book, but that will be coming very soon afterwards. Given my record of how quickly I've managed to write this book. Um, I'm sure it won't take me long to move on to the head trash book and get that one out too. So that's my update for today. And I'm going to go back and now get back to the show. So back to the show, which is all about having a childbirth without fear. So what exactly is that about? Well, let me just sort of go back a bit. When, like, when I first found out that I was pregnant for the first time, obviously I was delighted but I was also completely and utterly terrified because, well, it wasn't the idea of like having a child that was scaring me, although that's probably quite scary for many. It was the giving birth bit, you know, the bit that there's this thing going inside of you, it's getting bigger by the day and it, at some point it's going to need to come out that bit. Whereas I was in a, a real panic about that. And anyone that listened to me at the time, because I was sort of pretty vocal about it, I was like, yep, yeah, no, I want all the drugs in the world because I just need to cope with the pain. And that was pretty much my position. And so I was sort of sharing this view with somebody when I was on a course. In fact, one of the advanced courses where I was learning the technique that I share with you guys here that's become the head trash clearance method. And so I was telling this person about, you know, my views on, on birth. And she just sort of casually mentioned that she'd had a pain free birth, you know, with no drugs. And I was like, what? Like, how is that possible? Nobody told me that it was possible to have a pain-free birth without the drugs. Like, what is she pulling my leg? 
So I was really kind of intrigued by what she was saying. And not only that, I mean, she didn't just stop there sort of blowing my mind. She carried on. She said that basically, if you have a child, if you have a a fear-free birth, a pain-free birth with no drugs, then the children who are born, and we say they're born naturally, which means no medical intervention, then they're more likely to sleep better and sleep through the night sooner. They're going to cry less. They'll breastfeed more easily. And they'll generally be a lot calmer. And I was thinking well, hang on a minute, why isn't everybody doing this then? Surely that's what we all want when we have kids. We want kids that sleep, we want them not to cry. I was like, this this definitely convinced me to find out more about it. But the, the, the avoidance of pain was obviously the main driving factor because I am such a wuss when it comes to pain. I really, really am. So this began my own journey of really discovering and finding out more about these natural pain-free births like how on earth can one have one of these you know can you just buy them online what what do you have to do so I went through discovering how you went about it and she told me that she used a hypnobirthing method and that's very well known Um, so it uses hypnotherapy to enable you to have a positive birth experience so I was devouring this stuff like you know like it was going out of fashion so I really really like dived right into this subject and really tried to grasp it as much as I could. And and what was interesting for me was because I was learning about this technique, the reflective repatterning that I that I talk about a lot on this podcast, then this was a technique that helps you to clear your fears. So I was like, well, hang on a minute, you know, maybe I could use this stuff on clearing all my fears because I was really terrified of birth. You know, it was really just horrific. I couldn't think about it without crying. I couldn't read any articles about childbirth. I couldn't read my pregnancy books, especially when it was on the birth canal. I was really freaking out at that point. I really couldn't cope with it. And incredibly, during in my first birth, I went from this, this place of utter fear, which there's a term for people that are fearful of pregnancy and childbirth and they're called tocophobic. So tocophobia is the fear of labour and childbirth. And some women have it so bad that they might, if they're pregnant, they might sort of hit their bump, sort of almost trying to kill the baby, you know, because they literally cannot face giving birth. Or they might avoid becoming pregnant altogether and avoid becoming a mum purely because of the fear, even though they might deep down really want to be a mother. So it's a really terrible fear to have. And I don't think I had it to that level, but certainly I was in a real panic state with my fear. And I managed to get myself to a place for my first birth that was just amazing I had a natural birth at home in less than six hours and there's no way and I didn't have any drugs at all and the midwife I don't think I'm not sure how well she meant this but she called me an Amazonian woman of nature during my birth and I'm I'm trying to take that as a compliment I really am so um this is the journey that I went to you know I went from being completely terrified to being able to face a a, a drug-free birth and and absolutely managing to do it and not having the pain. So I'm sitting here telling you that, not telling you, I don't like using that word, but sharing that it is possible and there is hope for those of you that are terrified of birth and that really want to avoid the pain. And believe me, the bonus of having children that sleep through the night and don't cry. I mean, I've been very fortunate I've had that too. So this stuff really does work. So let me just share with you, how is it possible then to give birth and not experience the pain? What is it? What's the secret? Well, the secret is this, it's fear. Better still, actually, a childbirth without fear is a childbirth without pain. It's the fear of these And it always looks like a completely dramatic affair. There's lots of shouting, screaming, there's doctors everywhere, there's midwives everywhere, there's machines beeping. It's just all a bit dramatic. And there's a woman that clearly looks like she's in pain. There's midwives screaming, push, push, push. You know, there's big needles of epidurals. I mean, it's it's all really, really full on. And, and that's what we grow up learning. You know, I remember at school, I was shown the video that basically the best sort of sex education contraception that every teenage girl sees. And that's a, a video of a childbirth. And that sort of puts you off sex for life pretty much because you're so terrified of the outcome. And I think I'm I'm firming my fear definitely in the zone of schools they've got a lot to answer for here but essentially when we grow up thinking that childbirth is such a painful experience we then naturally become incredibly scared of it and this fear triggers this whole cascade of responses in the body that actually contributes to the pain and so if we can start you know changing that initial fearful response then this is really where it all begins and so the problem is we've got to stop seeing this stuff. We've got to stop looking at these horrible 
examples of births and stop listening to these experiences that are all around us. You know, women are only too happy to share their horrific birth stories and and almost sort of, hey, well, my labour is worse than yours. And we, we just don't need to hear that kind of stuff. It's important for these women to share that because they need to, that it, that's clearly been difficult for them to go through. And they need to get through that and move through it and talk about it. But equally, it doesn't help those that haven't yet had a child because it starts instilling the fear in them. And so I think it's important that we allow those positive birth experiences to come out as well and for people to share those so that other women can benefit from that, you know, because it's really not, doesn't have to be that way. So the other thing really to think about is essentially when you think about birthing and you know the procreation of the human race and other species of animals that walk this planet how many of the species can you think of that scream in agony when they give birth none you know cats dogs horses cows giraffes whatever you know if you look at any david attenborough program of nature and there'll be animals giving birth they're not looking like they're in agony they just kind of get on with it they just the little ones plop out and it's all very calm and it's very beautiful just as birth is you know it doesn't have to be this hugely dramatic experience and so you know this is this is really such a shame for us it's particularly the women that are, that are facing this and so really let me get back to why the fear creates the pain so in the context of childbirth and labor there's a, a known cycle that's called the fear tension pain cycle and if you're interested in then just stick that into google and you'll find a whole heap of you know, posts, articles, science research, books, all the rest of it on the fear, tension, pain cycle. But essentially it goes like this. When somebody is in fear, their state of mind will trigger the stress response within the body. And the stress response means that your body goes into the fight or flight mode. And when your body's in that state, it gets flooded with adrenaline. And that will help you to either run away really fast, so, or to fight. So your body's going to tense up all the blood leaves your main organs in the torso area and goes to your extremities, your arms and your legs. And that's to help you to run or to fight. And this is all about survival. This is all about ensuring that you survive because, you know, you've all heard it. The fight or flight response comes from when we were sort of threatened with saber-toothed tigers back in the day, except we don't have those kind of threats now. The stress that we have in our current lives is unlikely to be life-threatening and so but this is this is where it comes from this is where this response in the body comes from so let's just imagine for a minute that you're in a birthing environment you're giving birth and suddenly this fear comes into your body this stress then what happens in that moment is you've got adrenaline coming in your uterus which is your main muscle that's helping to make all this happen that's helping to bring the baby out stops because it's lost all the blood that's gone to your extremities the adrenaline has just bolded in and basically it it triggered this lack of the, the blood going to your extremities and so your muscle that was doing all this work now stops because nature's thinking hang on this isn't safe you know this isn't for us to survive as a species this is not a great time to be giving birth so let's just stop this labor thing let's just put it on hold and get somewhere safe before we can carry on and so that's why labor pretty much stops at that point it pretty much goes on hold until the woman is able to clear the fear and stress adverse system because once the fear is gone once the stress is gone adrenaline will leave now the reason that the other thing about adrenaline that's really interesting is it's a bit of a bullying hormone it's you know it's a bit like a bull in a china shop to be fair and it scares away the two main hormones that you need on the day when you're giving birth and that's endorphins and oxytocin now endorphins is natural nature's best painkiller i mean man has never been able to recreate a painkiller like it and this is what's on your side when you're giving birth you know your body is flooded with endorphins when things are going really well and your body's also flooded with oxytocin and oxytocin is the love hormone it's the one that's present you know when you made the baby and it's the one that keeps labor moving so the minute adrenaline comes in those two just scoot they're just not going to hang around at all they're going to disappear and all you're left with is adrenaline just causing this chaos in your system and so that's why labor slows down and if you sort of go against what nature's trying to do by carrying on to push you're going against nature and obviously that is going to hurt so all this balance is that that was really working really well having the hormones that you need present and no adrenaline just gets completely disrupted the minute fear and stress steps into the picture And it's only when you manage to get those out of the way that you can restore levels of oxytocin and endorphins that mean you can have that pain-free experience, that you can have that 
fast labour where it all keeps moving nice and quickly. And so that's sort of where this fear, tension, pain cycle starts. You know, the fear really is responsible for kicking off this this process, these sort of sequence of events in the body that is really not helpful, particularly in the context of childbirth. So it's really easy to see that when you go back to, well, what fears and stresses are we talking about here? Well, the obvious one is the fear of pain. And so you can see very quickly that this fear of pain is almost creating itself because without that fear of pain, if the fear wasn't there, then maybe the pain wouldn't be there. But let's, you know, let's be honest, there's probably some other fears flying around at the same time too. I mean, some of the fears that I had were included things like, you know, losing my dignity. I mean, hello, legs akimbo, all sorts of bodily fluids flying everywhere. It's understandable that women are like, oh my goodness, my other half is going to see me like that. You know, this is a fear. It's very valid. There's, you know, things might go wrong. Things, you know, you might die. I mean, there's all sorts of things that people worry about. And these are very real for those people. So the important thing is, is to clear those fears because, The thing is, the body doesn't distinguish between a real life-threatening fear and one that is just in your head. And so it's important to get rid of the ones in your head because you need to have the benefit of nature on your side. So how do you do that? Let's get to the nitty gritty. How do we get rid of our fears? Well, it's dead simple, actually. You just brainstorm all the things that you're scared of, of childbirth. So get a bit of paper, write it all down. You know, fear of pain, fear of childbirth, fear of losing my dignity, fear of making a mess on the floor, fear of whatever it going wrong. Just really go for it and write it all down. And then you use our five step process that is free on the homepage and just work through clearing all those fears. That is literally what I did. I spent a ton of time doing this. So believe me when I say that, you know, yes, it is possible, but it requires effort. It requires time and effort. But if you're committed and you really want to achieve that as a goal for you, and I did because I am a total pain worse and there's no way if I could avoid that and avoid the drugs, I really wanted to do that. But more than that, I wanted to have a baby that slept through the night and I wanted to have a baby that didn't cry because all that sounded like too much hard work for me. And I'm really lucky that that is exactly what I've got. And I put that down to the fact that I was able to have a natural birth. So this is all you need to do. It might sound impossible, but it isn't. It really isn't. So on that note, that is all you need to do. If you want to find out more about how I went about doing that, then check out the website at fearfreechildbirth.com. I will be starting a separate podcast sharing a lot more about what I did to achieve that. And some of that is probably going to be too much for the you guys on Headrash to listen to all the time. I don't want to lose you guys. So I'm going to put that on a separate podcast for the ladies that are really interested in finding out how you can, you know, everything that I think is important to know to help you get nearer to having that fear-free birth experience, which means no pain. So look out for that. That'll be launching in the next few weeks and I'll be sharing that launch date with you here on the Head Trash Show podcast as well. So listen out for that. Um, If you've got any questions and you know where I am, come and find me at hello at headtrash.co.uk. If you think that this episode would be useful to somebody else, then please, uh, you know, share it with people that you think will be interested in it. And if you find this stuff useful, I would really appreciate a review on iTunes or Stitcher. It really helps uh, the podcast, helps us, you know, we've just launched again and I'm really trying to get back into the charts. We were top of the self-help charts when I launched last year and I'm desperately trying to get back to a really good place in the charts so reviews really really help so if this stuff is helping you then I'd really appreciate a review on iTunes or Stitch that would be fabulous thank you very much I hope that today's been useful and I'll speak to you again next time bye for now thanks for tuning in you've just been listening to Alexia Leachman here on the Head Trash Show If you enjoyed the show, she'd really appreciate you leaving a review on iTunes. And don't forget to pop over to www.headtrash.co.uk to get your copy of the free 5 Steps to Clearing Head Trash Guide. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes for more strategies, tips and how-tos for clearing your head trash and reclaiming your headspace. Until next time.